the leading clap. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, hello. Um, thank you for the introduction. That takes care of some of my speech. <laughs> um, however, what Alicia didn't touch on is how good a teacher I am. <laughs> Um, I've become very good at teaching the way that I was taught in high school. Um, however, that has actually become a, somewhat of a problem recently. Um, the disconnect is because students in, current, in schools currently are not good at learning the way that I learned. And so something has to change. Um, currently I'm teaching Year 12 Chemistry, and it's not fun. Year 12 Design and Technology is also not fun. It's hard. The subjects are prescribed in content and in assessment. There's no choice. You will do this because it's written in a document. And it's prescribed by someone who I've never met, and for reasons that are a bit ambiguous and full of jargon. And then, at the end of the year, my work is checked that I've done it correctly by someone I'll never know, by an unknown entity using a somewhat scary process. And at the end of all that, I'm told how good a job I've done based on my grades, which I have very little direct control over, as I can influence students only so far as they give me the power to. I can't force them to do any work, and nor do I want to. In my experience, um, now, sorry, I do want to make it very clear that the Year 12 subjects are not fun. So I just want to make that distinction clear. In my experience, that the main reason students choose, for example, my Year 12 Chemistry, um, is because they need it for an imagined future university career in an imagined future job. Um, and that's fine to a point. But these students chose that subject, or the path that led to that subject, three and a half years before they'll ever need to use it, at age 14. Now, do you know what you want to be doing in three and a half years? And everyone in this room has had a lot more life experience and a lot more time to find out what's out there. So a 14 year old is asked, what are you doing? And we, we do. Um, I, I'm as guilty as the next teacher. I've never asked a student, um, what subject would you want to do to make yourself a better person? And like I said, some things have to change, so maybe next time I will. Currently, as I've experienced it, um, participation in Year 12 is an exercise in ranking students for university entrance, even if they're not on the university path. It's a system geared for standardisation and ranking based on a set of narrow academic principles that are applied to every subject area. However, this is changing, and I think the main reason for change is that we're beginning to listen. We listen to business and industry, sure, we've been doing that for a while. They've been telling us that they want these employability skills, and we've been slowly embedding them. But now we're starting to listen to the actual students as well, to the youth. And we're trying to actually take their, their feelings, their thoughts, their beliefs with respect. Um, now, before I did say that I was referring to Year 12, subjects are hard and not fun. The fun of Year 12, because I love teaching Year 12, the fun, and it's, it's an amazing honour and privilege that goes along with this fun, but the, the privilege comes from interacting with young people, especially young people who have survived um, with themselves intact throughout high school, but not only that, but developed their eyes for what is the possibilities out there. The ones who are not just obsessed with the drone of the correct answer. Um, I believe Sir Ken Robinson was right, um, that schools do systematically slaughter and sacrifice creativity um, to the god of normalisation and standardisation, and all on the altar of academic rigour. We have to prove that we are doing it right. But it's who do we have to prove it to? Um, there are some students who, despite our best efforts to, to kill their creativity, and sometimes in spite of those efforts, 
do come out the other end um, with not only their creativity intact but enhanced by our experiences. So I do believe we do good work. One of these examples um, was I attended a, a conference last year and it was about using innovative technology in schools. And the thing that left the biggest impact on me happened on the last day and it started just before lunch. We were lucky enough to have some hand-picked top students um, giving us a panel on a student perspective of what it's like to learn in a technology-rich classroom. Um, this particular school um, that was hosting us have had a one-to-one -one laptop program, so one laptop per student from year eight all the way up to year 12, and they've had this for about seven, ten years. Um, there were the standard questions from the teacher audience, um, such as what do you do with the computers in class, do you enjoy them, um, how is it different to not using computers, but then one educator challenged them, really challenged them, and he asked if you could remake school with all the new improvements, with all the technology, with all the bells and whistles, wipe the slate clean and start again, what would school look like? And when this panel of top students answered, my heart sank. The top students were so institutionalised that they couldn't imagine any other system other than one that obviously they had been very successful in. And what we had done is we had moulded our top students into our own image, thereby successfully maintaining the status quo. Or maybe that's actually why they were identified as top students, because their success would feed back into the system. Now, I am being extremely melodramatic and quite harsh, and I don't believe that anyone given that question in three seconds to talk in front of 150 strangers, including your own teacher who's about to mark a thousand word essay, I doubt that anyone's going to be telling them, oh, you did a bad job. So I forgave them. Luckily, there was another student there who had a similar response to me. And the difference was that she actually went off and did something about it. Um, she felt that those students had wasted an opportunity. They had wasted their voice to a captured, teacher audience and they had not taken the opportunity to influence the future of education. So she, instead of giving, being given three seconds to answer, she was given three hours. She was going to go away with a laptop and present a movie that she was going to make. And she was going to present it at the end of the day. And I'd like to share that with you. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm a Year 12 student at Scotch and I've been asked to reflect on some of the questions that were asked of the other students earlier today. I've had three hours to prepare this. Last year I did Year 12 Biology and the first topic was experimental skills which is where we learn how to write up a proper Year 12 standard prac report. And then I found out pretty quickly that when you do a practical or an experiment it's not actually about the investigation, it's about how well you write it up. So, for example, if you say replicate instead of repeat, you lose a mark. If you forget to mention the independent variable in your hypothesis, you lose another mark. And it really frustrated me that it didn't matter how well I understood the concepts or how well I'd learnt it, um, it just mattered that we knew exactly what the markers wanted us to say. Um, so when we did the test on the topics, it was the exact same thing. Um, I really enjoyed biology, I really loved learning about it, but at the end of the year, with the exam coming up, I wasn't learning, I was just memorising. I was memorising the key ideas, I was memorising the intended student learning outcomes, and so when I got into the exam I could just write it down word for word. Now that I'm in Year 12, um, I can say it's true for all my subjects. I do math studies, math specialist and physics, and basically we just get given a bunch of formulas and get told to put the numbers in it doesn't matter where the formula came from or if we understand it, we just have to accept it. At the moment we learn methods, we learn to do what we're told is the right thing. The tests and exams we do and the results we get for them, they're not a reflection of how well we learn, if we understand or how well we think, they're just a reflection of how well we regurgitate facts and information. The curriculum at school is forcing us to do the work in the same way that's been done for years and basically this is so that students can be assessed and as being right or wrong, 
and then we can be ranked and compared with other students. But why should we have to all jump the same bar? Why can't we create our own bar? I mean, don't get me wrong, I know I'm really lucky. I know I've had a great education and I go to a great school. But if I had to change something about school, if I had to wipe the slate clean, that's where I'd start. I want to be able to wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to try something different. Today I'm going to do something new. Today I'm going to create something. If I had to wipe the slate absolutely clean, I'd say, let's not have subjects. Let's not have a syllabus. I think teachers should be there to give us the tools to be able to investigate and find information and use it and present it. They should be like a mentor. I think we should be allowed to discover things for ourselves. Let us learn to learn. If you do something different, but it still works, you shouldn't be penalised. You should be rewarded. I mean, everything in the world that's good and new is a result of someone thinking outside the square. But at school, we're forced to stay inside the square and never to question the boundaries of the square. Given that I did this in three hours, I wonder if I had to handwrite it like an essay in an exam. Would it have been any different? Would it have come out in the same way? Would I have been able to communicate it better or worse? And would you have been interested in reading it? Um, no. <laughs> So that forms um, my current experiences with teaching Year 12 subjects and the students. Um, subjects are prescriptive and disconnected from industry and life, um, and students are taught to look for the correct answer, but no further than the back of the textbook. But there are exceptions. Things are changing. Now imagine a subject that encompasses all the things that Nicole the video articulated. Imagine a subject that allowed you to do something just because you want to learn it. What's something that you would like want to learn? Um, how to cook Thai food. How to cook Thai food. Okay, we'll fit that into this subject. What about someone else? How to make Thai food apps. Oh, how to make Thai food apps. For that, we'll have to cram maybe a small part of that into this subject. But would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. What about you? What would you do? Um, how to live off of my own vegetable garden. Nice. Now, currently, there's no subject. BAMS comes close. In my communication products, I can almost teach you how to do that. In Home Ec, we can teach you how to do that. But only if I choose. Only if, if the teacher, based on the Year 12 curriculum, chooses to do that. Now, this subject exists. There is a solution to this. However, it's still in its infancy. It's only been introduced this year. Now, currently, students are participating in this subject and we're actually forcing them to participate in this uh, subject. And as such, it still holds all the weight and the consequences of the Year 12 education system as it stands. So it's not a very good solution yet. But it will be. The subject I'm talking about is called Research Project. And if I was talking to a bunch of Year 12s who have just done it, or who are Year 11s who are about to do it, there would have been a great, massive, collective groan from the audience. And it's really tragic, because this subject you can do anything. It's no longer driven by me, the teacher. It is driven by you. Now, like I said, um, at the moment in its first year, it's not much more than proof of concept. And it's still a baby. It's a vulnerable lamb being thrown amongst the wolves. Both teachers and students have their vast opinions about it. Um, when it grows up, once it comes of age, I believe that research project as a subject will be the flagship of our education system. It's a subject where all the cool jobs of the future that don't even exist yet, where you can learn how to deal with them. It's where you can learn how to deal with all the hard things in life, like where do I find rent? Who do I, who do I buy a house from? Or what happens when my child gets head lice? 
these are the things that we're teaching in that subject. Because we're teaching skills, foremost and utmost. And that causes a few problems. Because I'm no longer in charge of the content. I'm contentless in my classroom. I have to rely on students to come up with the content that I know nothing about. I'm a terrible gardener. So sorry, I can't help you. And that's where you come in, the wider community. I can be in charge of the educational outcomes of the system. That's what I get paid for, to know that backwards and forwards. But what the community, local, state, national, international can help with, is helping students by coming into the school, whether it's through email, Skype, any other internet, web pages, any other methods that we have, but coming into the school and actually mentoring the students in this subject. Um, teaching research project was good for me. Now I'm not saying that I did a good job of it, I'm saying it was good for my professional development. It was the best professional development as a teacher I've ever done. Because the principles of letting students learn in their own way, in their own directions, that's going to filter down into my other classrooms, I hope. And I believe that's where the future of education can go. In my science classroom, there's plenty of science to choose from. Do I have to be the one who chooses it? So my challenge and invitation, if anyone is in the local community, is talk to your local school about research project because there is so much expertise in the local community and teachers need help. So is there anyone who's willing to help? Oh yeah. Okay, if anyone would like to talk to me more about it, then I'll be sticking around afterwards. Thank you.